Hi, my name is Kida. In the last year and a half, I've been working as a lab tech and doing a bit of microscopy. I particularly like looking at tardigrades, so I thought I'd share this interesting event of a tardigrade death. It's a little bit gruesome, be warned, um, but I think it is really quite interesting. So let's take a look. So I really love watching tardigrades interact with other microorganisms. It's really quite interesting. Um, in this video I took recently, you can see a tardigrade getting all tangled up with a nematode worm, it's quite funny. Um, but back to this tardigrade from last year, it was the first time I'd seen one eating a nematode worm. So you can see the worm sticking out of its mouth here. So I was very excited to watch it. And I noticed the tardigrade was moving very, very slowly, just occasionally moving a few legs. I also saw this cloud near the head, which I just assumed was plant material because they often have some stuck to them and it just seemed to be really slowly digesting a good meal. Um, but after a while, I realized that the tardigrade looked strange, and it's because the feeding apparatus was just in the wrong place. Um, so here's a quick summary of tardigrade anatomy. You have the mouth, the buccal tube, these two wishbone-shaped stylets to pierce their food, and then the pharynx or pharyngeal bulb, and the esophagus which meets to the stomach. And you can also kind of see the salivary glands here too. Um, but back to this tardigrade, the feeding apparatus had become dislodged and it's fallen to the side of the tardigrade's head. So I think it broke off at the esophagus, maybe just under the pharyngeal bulb. And I'm not sure if this happened early on when the tardigrade was trying to eat the worm, if the worm maybe thrashed around and caused the injury, or if it happened later when the tardigrade was just trying to swallow it and the worm was just too big. So could this be something the tardigrade could survive? Um, I've read in literature that some tardigrades will discharge some of their buccal pharyngeal apparatus when they molt. So at this point, I was wondering if the tardigrade would possibly be able to produce a new one. Uh, I don't know, but it seemed like this was already a bad injury. But it just got so much worse. So at this point, I realized that the cloud around the head might actually be some of the body fluid, the hemolymph, coming out. And over time, it became obvious that that was the case. The bulb broke through the cuticle, and all of this hemolymph and cells just started pouring out of the body. And so over time, the tardigrade lost the ability to move its legs. There just wasn't enough fluid and cells to support movement anymore. And it was really quite sad to watch, but this was the result. So at this point, it kind of looks like a horror movie. The tardigrade's head has basically exploded. And so I thought it had died, but then I noticed there was still some leg movement happening. So it really took a long time for death to occur. So we know tardigrades can survive a lot of really tough conditions, but just like other animals, they can die if they're eaten or badly injured. And in this case, this one died because it tried to eat something that was just too big or maybe too active, and it just caused major damage. So I have seen tardigrades eat other microorganisms before, and they seem to just pierce them with their stylets, suck out the cells for a while, and then drop them. But that's not what happened in this case. So I hope you enjoyed watching, even though it's a bit sad and a bit messy. At the same time, it's still really interesting, I think. So let me know your thoughts. I do have another interesting interaction between a tardigrade and a protist, which I might post in the next few weeks. So stay tuned. But thanks for watching.